Welcome to Resilient Minds 365. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. For the next three episodes, we will be hearing from the phenomenal hip hop group, Mindful MCs, who will be sharing their amazing stories of resilience. Due to the length of these powerful stories, we have decided to break it up in three parts. So sit back, relax, and let me introduce you to the Mindful MCs part one. Welcome to Resilient Minds 365, where we discuss the resilient stories of entrepreneurs, professionals, and students with mental health challenges to encourage you to strive, thrive, live, and live in abundance. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. So guys, today we have a special episode for you today. We have a group, as you can see, it's not just one person, but we have five guests today. We have the mindful MCs with us today. Who are they? Who are they? Look at the t-shirts. They have them out there. It's so awesome. So the, mindful, <laughs> so the mindful MCs use hip hop as a vehicle to uplift those who suffer from mental health conditions. Each member in the group has lived experience and their own individual relationship with mental health challenges. Our, their mission is to raise awareness and reduce the stigma by creating safe spaces and avenues to talk about, support, and prevent mental health issues. They strive to bring people together and build community. They share their stories and reflections through original music and public speaking. Their approach is unique raw, entertaining, and powerful. They inspire others to keep their head up and follow their dreams as they are living proof that not only is recovery possible, but also a full of beautiful, creative life. So that is the mindful MCs. Did I do a good job or did I go good? <laughs> 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 wonderful, wonderful. So first, we're just going to have you guys to introduce yourselves, starting from the top, which will be from um, the top left. Um, so first is, what is your name? And what is your stage name? And how did you come up with it? I'm thinking our, our order might be, look a little different on each screen. So who's top left for you, Cleone? Jamie. OK. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, well, before I share, um, I just want to acknowledge that my story of resilience has been greatly impacted by the privilege that I have as a white cis woman. Um, I want to acknowledge the long history of systemic racism and institutionalized racism in our world. And I'm seeing I've had advantages and choices, uh, you know, because I'm white. Um, so while Black and Indigenous people, particularly trans folk, have been criminalized in our world. Um, yeah, so I'm here today to share, but also to listen and to celebrate these beautiful men that uh, I am blessed to know and on this journey with. So, Perfect, wonderful. So your name is Jamie, and what is your stage name, and how did you come up with it? Uh, my stage name is Gladitude, MC Gladitude. I came up with it back in like 2014. And um, yeah, gratitude. It's a combination of gratitude, glad, attitude, and gladiator. It okay. sort of reminds me of like my, my inner warrior, my inner strength that sometimes I forget. Okay. Um, and just like the practice of gratitude, you know, it's something that we do each day and I really want to encourage people to practice gratitude and it's like been a huge game changer for me it's just like a new lens on the world and it, it really brings you more in the present moment and just you know think about what you have not what you don't have and so I'm really grateful to be here today awesome thank you so very much and the next person whoever wants to just chime in 
Um, I guess I'll chime in. Uh, my name is Jamal. I go by Jay Small. Um, I've struggled from mental illness uh, since I was a child, but it's, it got a lot worse in my 20s. And I was very privileged to meet a group of people um, that, you know, could relate to me. And obviously, I was able to meet my brother. <laughs> uh, just kidding. We were born as brothers. And so me and him have worked so hard together to help each other, each other uplift um, ourselves. And when we, when we met this other, the rest of the group, it was just like, it was just perfect in terms of, you know, our ability to, to help others and to help ourselves. We all work together and I love making music with these guys. And yeah. Amazing. Okay. And how did you choose your name? How did you come up with your name? Jay Small is a name that people have been calling me since grade two. And I don't know where they came up with it. <laughs> <I'm just stuck. laughs> it's a moniker that you just took on. Yeah, like, I mean, it was my best friends that were, tough, that were you know, calling me it. So I was like, okay, well, I guess, I guess it's good. Okay, okay. So the next person, uh, which is, what is your name and what is your stage name and how did you come up with it? So maybe we'll yes, ask uh, whoever wants I'll, to join. I'll join in. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my uh, my name is Brian Bravo. Um, uh, my my stage name I went by was uh, B squared. Uh, more recently, I've just been sticking to more of my roots and just by going by Brian Bravo. So, um, reason being is because um, I think I want it. A lot of my family would call me Brian and refer to me as Brian. A lot of my close friends would call me Brian. Um, as an MC, I was I was called B squared, and some friends did call me B squared. But I think I just wanted to stick more to those family roots, mm -hmm. which is why I started doing that transition. Um, this is actually just amazing. Everything that's uh, being here and. You know, I just being with the other MCs right here, I think I really like this. And, you know, um, I, I actually like this, the story of just being here. It's just very meaningful to me right now. Okay. So I think I'll just um, leave it at that right now. It's just very, very cool. Cool. Awesome. And then the next person. Yeah, um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll go. Um, my name is uh, E.T. <laughs> and uh, sorry, can you just repeat the questions? What yeah, sure. So introduce yourself. What is your name? What is your stage name? And how did you come up with it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, my name is obviously my real name is uh, the, the name given to me by my mom and yeah, is um, Hernan. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, I guess introducing myself uh yeah I've been I guess we've all been through a lot of like ups and like a lot of lows um yeah I don't know just just looking back uh I guess like what Brian said I'm grateful to be here and know everyone here because like looking back like like looking back like when it was it was like like those hard times uh, like I, I didn't think I would be here though so being here like every day to me is a blessing and I'm grateful for each day. So, and uh, yeah, my stage name is uh, E.T. And um, yeah, uh, it, it, it just came about naturally. Like uh, I remember when I first started it, I, it was like extraterrestrial, MC extraterrestrial. Wow. And then uh, I'm, I'm not sure who, who it was that like, came up with ET to me but uh yeah it just it just like evolution it just I, I, like it just like evolved naturally into ET mm -hmm. like uh, it started at learn though that's that's where uh this uh, journey for me kind of started to be honest okay cool yeah do you want to talk a bit about what learn is um, yeah for, yeah for sure uh, learn is a uh, it's a outpatient Cam age program, and uh, basically uh, they 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 run a lot of groups throughout the throughout the day, and uh, they have writing groups, uh, sports and gym, 
uh, things like that, you know, and uh, it, it was just like mainly, to be honest, like, like what, what really hit me there was like all the support mm -hmm. and, and all the love that came with, with being there and just like all the care that people like had and all the love that that was just shared there. It just it just made that place special. It just it just it just helped me grow like as a person and like I feel like even spiritually it helped me evolve. Like and uh, I'm sure like we've we've all felt that because we've all like passed through learn like and we've all been there. So like uh, I'm sure we we can all like uh like like relate, you know, like yeah, relate. Okay, cool. And our final guest <laughs> <laughs> cool cool yeah my name is Meshach uh first thing I want to say though is yo ET if you can move your camera to a bit less lighting like that light is strong yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> no I need you square no. here bro I need, I need... <laughs> no worries man no no worries but uh yeah my name is Meshach I go by the MC name Shayel and it has two different meanings uh the first meaning is to keep me humble because it reminds me of who I was. I was always a very shy person growing up and I would always take the L, which is I would always take the loss. I would never want to win. I would never want to be successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second meaning of it is it's the end of Mishael, who is a character in the Bible that was thrown in a fire but never got burned who it was kind of like purified by the fire and came out wow. uh as a new as a new person and uh that's the real name of the character but the name he he was his slave name he was given as Meshach like what I was born as so it's kind of like I'm taking my my slave uh nature was burned in the fire and I'm taking back my real roots and Shiel's the end of Mishael so it has like those two uh different meanings Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so very much, gentlemen, and um, Jamie as well. Um, so one of you guys can answer this question, which is, what made you guys choose the name Mindful MCs? Whoever wants to answer, just go ahead. That's probably either for uh, Shiel or, or uh, Hernan, I would think. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess uh, I'll start and then we can just go from there. Uh, yeah, again, like it, it happened at uh, Learn. That's where I remember the name Mindful MC first. Mindful MCs first started coming out. Uh, yeah, I, I remember I was with Meshack and uh, we were just kind of like, and I, I feel I feel like Jamal was there too at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we were just kind of like just starting out the group and we're just like, man, what, what should we call the group and uh, just uh, mindful MCs came out and we kind of stuck with it. And um, yeah, that, that's, I don't know, that's, I guess that's like a little story of, of like the name, like where it came from. Mm -hmm. Is there like a message behind it? Is there something you're trying to convey by calling yourself the mindful MCs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, mindfulness and like a mindful way of life, just, uh, be mindful of your choices because they have consequences just uh living in the now i think that that whole uh meaning that the word mindful has we've we've done our best to uh get that message across okay wonderful so so how long have you guys been a band so um i think um one thing that I think we kind of identify ourselves as is a, is a group. Okay. And reason being is because sometimes in a band, there's always like um, like a person or someone on top or mm -hmm. there's always um, like, I think we're more of a group because that's how we started. And as coming from like a mental health, we always went to these peer groups or, uh, or just out, out patient groups. They're always been groups so we we've always kind of clicked that way mm -hmm. as like friends and individuals with mental health too like we we've, we've always clicked in that certain thing so we've always kind of gone to the 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 word group okay um but yeah we, we've kind of been 
um, around since I think the dinosaur ages or something, something like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> a long time. <laughs> Very long time. Uh, I might pass it to you, Jamie, though, but because uh, from learn, you know. Ooh, Hernanda was looking real good, and then I know, right? <laughs> Hey, I'm having mad issues with the tech. <laughs> so I think two years. Two years? It's more uh, like two years since we started performing, but we were together even in 2017. Okay. Okay. Cool. And um, the next question I wanted to ask is, so I guess you guys met through the outpatient programs. Is it Learn? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, also, uh, CMHA Canadian Mental Health Association. Me and Brian met there. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more. What is CMHA Canadian Mental Health Association? Um, what programs were you doing there? Uh, at the Canadian Mental Health Association, I was only going to peer support groups at first, and then they 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 said they were doing a talent show called the Night of Hope. Mm -hmm. and I, I met Brian there at a rehearsal for it and then he performed there and that's like the, yeah the first time we met and then the funny thing is I met Hernan also there at peer support groups and one, and one night he's just like hey let's go over to my friend's house and it turned out his friend was Brian so he, <laughs> are, he already knew him so we we had that in common and then he's like hey man like the, the, the CMHA groups are cool you should also check out learn it's like a, a cam age program they got you can play basketball there's like cooking groups there's all this stuff and then i finally went there and that's where i met jamie and my bro came in as a guest they, re they really welcomed him there and he performed there a bunch of times with us uh at talent shows and stuff wicked awesome so now we got to know who you guys are, we're going to go into the mental health piece. So for each of you, what is your mental health diagnosis and when were you diagnosed? We'll start uh, with, go back in the same order. Um, I've, I was diagnosed with bipolar one disorder back in 2016 when I was having a manic episode. Mm, okay. Yeah, uh, I was also diagnosed as the exact same as a bipolar one. I was in, I was in psychosis at the time, mm -hmm. probably when I was diagnosed, but I'm not I'm not sure because I went to several hospitals, like a couple at least, before they fully diagnosed me. Okay, and what year would that have been? Uh, that would be. Uh, I can't exactly remember. That's I okay. Was, I think it was 2012. Uh, oh. Yeah, either, either yeah, either 2012 or 2011. Yeah. Okay, okay, so a few years now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember if it was me or her name. I think it doesn't really matter. I think okay. Oh, it's going popcorn. So <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll I'll go. So yeah, um, yeah, my mental health diagnosis was uh, depression and early psychosis. Okay. So um, that was back in 2013 that I found out. Um, that's when I was hospitalized in the child um, child section. And then that's where um, I kind of um, came out of it a different way. Just knowing that because I've kind of struggled through high school and stuff and even elementary school. So it was actually kind of liberating to know what it was. Okay. As um, a early adult, late teen. Okay, I can understand that the liberating part of knowing, finding out what. Mm. All right, and then Sorry. we'll go to ET, I believe. Yeah. ET. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, for me, uh, uh, I must have been like, like I, I must have been like 16 years old when I first went in and saw like a psychiatrist. And uh, from what I remember back then, he, he diagnosed me with uh, general anxiety and PTSD. 
mm. at the time but um yeah i don't know it's, it's been a while since like i've been um like reassessed and stuff like that so like i don't know it's, it's just like i don't know there's just there's, there's just thoughts in my head they're just flying around right now but um but yeah my my earliest diagnosis i can remember is like uh ptsd and general anxiety okay okay and shyel yeah, I was diagnosed with bipolar one in 2013. Okay, perfect. All right, let me just uh, get my next question. So the next question I have for you guys is, um, so we're gonna go into the meat of it um, for each person. So I'd like to, I'd like to know what is your mental health story of resilience? How, you know, where did you come from? How, how, what ha has your mental health? Um, journey taking you through and um, if you can just you know highlight some of the points and um, yeah so we'll start with Jamie gratitude, okay. gratitude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah I guess just like since being a teenager just getting very familiar with depression and spending a lot of time depressed and like just at home in my bed, like not, not working, not seeing friends, not like being social, just um, really being horrible to myself. Like, you know, the, the negative self-talk, uh, yeah. which I now see and I now realize as like self-harm, mm -hmm. you know, when we're talking to ourselves like that, like it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty serious self-harm. Um, so I started going like when I was in my 20s or whatnot, I started going to the doctor uh, and they would give me antidepressants and I would feel okay for a little while and then it would happen again. And then I would feel okay for a while and it would happen again. So it became this cycle of like just temporary help. It wasn't really sustainable. So um, I wasn't coping well with just general life stuff like failures and whatnot and I would get like thrown back into a depression um so I eventually reached out to um to like cam h or like a more um yeah higher up than my doctor and that took me on like a wild strange scary journey for a while um they increased my antidepressants which uh shot me into a manic episode and then I was hospitalized for, for mania and like kind of in and out of the hospital for a while on a lot of different medications. Um, and once like I started to come out of that, I like fell into like a really deep, dark, dangerous mm -hmm. depression. Mm -hmm. like, I'd never felt that horrible before. And it was, yeah, it was um, just felt very like, isolated and alone like I in my own mind I feel like I couldn't really talk or connect with anybody like I just felt very lonely um and just tortured like not sleeping just being awful to myself all the time feeling like that not enoughness and um living in fear pretty much and uh yeah I tried to end my life in a very dangerous way uh, I got to that point and um, I uh, thankfully am okay and, and like physically was okay like I'm um, but uh, I think after that experience um, after that experience like something kind of switched or flipped in me like I was back in the hospital after that and I think I thought I was going to be in the hospital for the rest of my life like I thought like I was just not going to be like part of society it was just going to be alone and you know unwell my whole life mm -hmm. um so to like be like I was able to leave the hospital and like became more stabilized on medication and like that's when I started going to learn um and so there was just this like this flip or the switch that happened where um yeah it's just like every day is a, a blessing like i just so blessed to be alive and to be here and um 
that was sort of after that experience, like I, yeah, just sort of started feeling a little bit better each day and something amazing. like that. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So now we'll move on to Jamal. Yeah, so for me, it was um, ever since I was like seven, I suffered from depression, even if it was, it might have been even earlier than that, but it wasn't like severe depression. It was just, it wasn't great, you know, and um, I, you know, I love to play piano and other instruments and stuff like that. But then eventually I, I stopped playing instruments and I just, you know, reluctantly got through life in high school, I would get bouts of extreme depression, but then I would also get periods of time where I was like, you could almost say manic because I was just so eccentric and energetic. Mm -hmm. But once I was 21, um, I uh, ended up doing a psychedelic substance that basically gave me a psychotic episode for two months straight. And ever since then, I was bipolar. Like after that episode, I was manic and then I became severely depressed, like suicidal. And then it would just happened like every year. It'd be like, manic for two months, super suicidal for eight months or something. And then in between maybe for the other two. And then it just, it went on like that. I did a whole bunch of crazy things. I'm lucky to be alive. And I, my heart just hurt pretty much constantly. Um, just filled with delusional thoughts. Everyone hates me. This person hates me, blah, 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 blah. It's agony for anyone who's ever experienced it. So I experienced that for a good seven years before I started turning, turning things around by trusting my doctor and taking my meds more consistently. And now I'm at the best, best place I've ever been in my life uh, without any doubt whatsoever. And um, I just hope to continue to be happy and help other people and just do my role that, uh, let's say the cosmos has intended for me to do. I'm ready to put all that past pain behind me. I'm ready to forgive anyone who's ever wronged me. I'm ready to even forgive people who are wronging other people mm -hmm. because I realize that everyone acts out of ignorance and uh, I choose not to, I choose not to act out of ignorance. I choose to be accountable for my behavior. So it's been a huge change. Thanks. Thanks to the so-called illness that they, that they put on me. It's not an illness whatsoever. I feel, I feel any mental illness is actually just this very simply a blessing in disguise. You just have to understand how to unlock, unlock it so that it works for you instead of, you working for it. Wow, amazing story. Okay, person? So, um, yeah, these are, these are good stories actually. Um, so I kind of started my journey through off um, elementary school when I would encounter like a lot of fighting. My parents would be fighting a lot. They eventually got divorced around a certain time when I was in elementary school, which, um, kind of made me feel very very low and that's the first time I experienced like a depression sort of a state mm -hmm. which I just thought it was just like a different type of sadness um so then that led us to moving around a lot we moved to like Richmond Hill Vaughn Toronto we, we moved like to many spots even within Toronto mm -hmm. so when it came to that uh I had two dogs there and they were um very meaningful to me so then it got to a point where um, my dog, he started getting sick as I was getting through high school because he was already getting to the old age. Mm -hmm. So um, by the end of the, my last exams um, of high school, we, we already had put him down. And at that point, I didn't really care if I, if I did well or if I failed or I passed because mm -hmm. I was already struggling through so much in high school. So it got to the point where... Um, I started becoming very suicidal after we put him down. And I thought maybe this is not meant to be. Maybe life is not for me. Maybe I'm not gonna be here. And maybe it's better if I just leave. So then um, that kind of led me into hospital for a bit. I got, I got medicated because mm -hmm. um, I was having a lot of episodes of anger and just fighting and just um, getting to fight the school even be before but then I, I found out that I had a uh, early psychosis which also had some delusions to it too oh so those delusions um kind of made me see 
certain things around me and like maybe I would see my dog after he passed even though he wasn't physically there I felt like I would see him going through my world um so when I got out of the hospital that kind of led me to um drinking and using certain uh substance which led to me uh falling into this coma oh and I think when I fell into a coma and they thought I would have brain damage or thought I wouldn't make it out and I did wake up that was like the turning point for me which I was like you know what I gotta make that change I gotta use these strategies I gotta do something or else I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna go anywhere so that's when I started working these different jobs um doing a lot of writing and music yeah and it was since since I was going back to my roots. So like even in, in hospital, the only thing I had was a pen and a paper and I'd be writing poetry like 24 um, seven. So then I was like, you know what? Let's just do this. Why not? And it was the most healing and benefiting thing in my world. And I still use it till today, every day actually. Yes. And uh, I feel like it's, it's just incredible how art just in general even even like I do photography too like art and music hand in hand are like the most therapeutic tools of my life wow very cathartic very very cathartic mm. okay so we'll go to ET um yeah uh yeah for me I, I guess um my journey uh started off like very young like uh i uh it, it's it really started off with like my family to be honest because um it almost like brian uh, there was like a lot of fights in the family which especially when my mom divorced my dad the my dad's side of the family like turned against us and um yeah it was like, i don't know it was, it was just like a lot it was really hard to deal with all that especially because um I was like really young and like everything was so confusing for me at the time. And uh, it was just like my my family was just, I don't know, I, I was just never there. And uh, they always, yeah, there's, there's just like, like, I'm sorry, like to be honest, like I'm gonna be honest, like, like I haven't been doing too well, like, like personally, oh. like my, myself. So uh, like my, my head is in like clear and, uh, yeah, like, I just kind of been going through a bit of like a uh, low mood and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's that's why I'm like I'm, I can't even like really like like fully focus on like what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to be honest and just say that like like I what I've learned on my journey is like mental health is like an ongoing thing. Continue. It's, it's not like it, it, you know, it, it's like one. You can be you can be having like the best week of your life one week or like or yeah, like like one week and then the next week you just fall back into like like a low or mm -hmm. like something like that and like yeah I guess yeah that's, that's just what I learned myself with uh with what, what I go through with my mental health it's just an ongoing thing and like the the lows come the highs come and um it's just I don't know. It's just it's just how you deal with it and and th things like that, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, I guess my my resiliency piece like really comes into play like uh, when when I started uh, rapping, when I started like you know, like uh, actually like making music, which started with the Mindful MCs when I got together with uh, this group. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just. Uh, like Brian was saying, like, it, it just really helps to express yourself and just uh, release all the tension and release all the emotion from your yeah. body, you know, from your mind. And um, it, it's just, I don't know, it just really helped me a lot because there's a lot, like for myself, like I, I keep a lot of things in, like I internalize a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I don't always speak up like when I should, you know, and, and that's a problem I have. I know it, and it's something like I want to fix and I'm, I want to get better at and I am going to get better at. And um, 
yeah and and basically yeah that's that's my resilient piece is uh um turning my lows into art basically like turning my emotions into art for the world to see i guess you know amazing, you know, amazing. we love you hernan you, yeah, you, you that was so amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I love you guys too. Yeah, I love you guys too. Well, I don't know if I got the heart. Yet. Uh, yeah, mine looks more like an oval. But, uh, so, yeah, I think I got a heart. I think I got it. I think I got yeah, it. Fine, nice heart. <laughs> and then finally, we'll have Shiel to share his story. What was the question again exactly? Um, your mental health story of resilience. Basically, where you came from and how you were able to be resilient, bounce back, bounce forward, oh. actually bounce forward. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, I think for sure, growing up, I dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression, like severe, but at that time, I didn't know what it was. I thought I was just shy. Um, all right, that's a whole shy out thing, but it was definitely deeper than that because I would literally lock myself in a closet for hours sometimes or just stay in my room and cry instead of go to like a friend's birthday party or like fun events or social things and that kind of thing like just skip school and and all that kind of stuff and so I think like the roots of it definitely were in childhood and it just got worse and worse worse without really talking to anybody about what I was going through um until like in university it kind of hit a climate well I actually felt a bit better for a bit of university when I got my first job and I was doing good in school and stuff, but I was kind of, I was living in, uh, what's the word, suffering in silence still. And it just kind of, mm -hmm. it hit a peak when I, I first um, went to a mental hospital in 2013. And, and before then, I first actually started having manic episodes. And I should also say before that too, um, in university, I started getting into binge drinking usually just on weekends. And then that evolved into going to the, the liquor store every single day, getting drunk every day, getting high every day. I lost my job. I, I got kicked out of school off of o OSAP and everything like that. And um, yeah, I, I pretty much lost all my relationships. Everybody saw me go from this guy who was like this respectable guy um, that people looked up to and stuff to this guy that was like, picking off coins off the ground to be able to to buy a tall can or whatever and just like I was stealing from people all, all this stuff I got to a really a really low place and then I, I first went to a mental hospital and I got diagnosed in 2013 with bipolar type one you know I was having all the normal symptoms of mania uh, delusions the psychosis I'd have hallucinations hear voices um, you know, I, I, th I threatened people. I, I attacked people. I, I got, I got my own life in danger in some, some situations. And it was a really long journey for me. Like, uh, I went in and out of mental hospitals for three and a half years. Uh, it, it was six times in total. And like my bro said, how he thought he was going to be trapped in the cycle forever. Like I thought I was going to be in mental hospitals just for the rest of my life and never be able to achieve anything. Cause I, at the most, maybe I'd have like a couple good months in the year, a few good months. And like the rest of it was similar to him, just like pure depression every single day, mm -hmm. blackout, blackout drunk, uh, getting arrested, um, just getting in, into all, all these problems with, with people. Um, and then like what really helped me to turn, well, well, music was something actually that I started at around like age 18, I started drumming. And that was always like, whenever I'd have those like momentary good times, I was always playing music. Like I, I learned to play piano or I was, I was drumming. I started rap. My bro's actually the one that got me into rap, my younger bro, Jay Small. Um, so, I, but I'd often rap them when we were partying, honestly, in the beginning, like everybody was just like lit and we were just like doing, doing yeah, free stuff. Know, sorry to cut in. Like we used to, we used to rap every day, me and him. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, this guy's got a little bit of skill. And then like slowly and surely, he just surpassed the heck out of me. And I'm so proud. I'm like, this guy didn't even know he could rap. I had to keep going like, dude, you're sick. You're sick. You're sick. Right. Actually, I remember one time him and a friend told me, they're like, yo, you could like be a rapper. And I was just like, what are these guys? So they're just, they're just trying to like, 
yank my chain or whatever. But yeah, if it wasn't for him, for sure, the, the inspiration, it, it helped me. So yeah, rap, like music was a, a thing that was like the only thing that made me happy, but I could never stay well enough to do it on a consistent basis. So I could never make consistent progress. And then what really helped me turn around my mental health was going to these outpatient groups, especially learn CAMH, like the support there was awesome. And uh, meeting more like-minded people who've been through similar things. And like what really helped was they helped us get connected to these projects that um, really forced me to invest a lot of my time in. And it's like, I liked investing a lot of my time in it though, because it was so much fun. Like we wrote an anthology called Shedding Light on the Shadows. So we wrote, so I had all these poems from over the years I would write um, when I was doing well or when I was manic or depressed that I, I could actually compile into being part of this book or we um we do a, a coffee house and they would actually help us um they would let us get involved to, to plan it like what the schedule would be and like they we would write songs together that we'd perform there and um all that kind of all that kind of stuff there's lots of opportunities they got us into public speaking and a whole bunch of um opportunities so we could like use our, our negative experiences for for the positive and um that's where it started for me. I, I quit drinking actually right when I started going there in 2017. I've been sober for over three years. Amazing. Now, <laughs> thanks. Thanks. And just like, I still had like some, for sure, I've still gone through some depressions and some manias, but I'm also thankful I haven't been to the uh, mental hospital since 26. Actually, it was October. So it's almost four years now since I've been to a mental hospital amazing and uh i think yeah really my story is that i found a community and i found like meaningful activities for me to contribute and yeah mindfulness meditation i, I, I practice meditation usually every day so that that helps there's but there's been a lot of uh self-care things i'm sure we can get into like that later but uh yeah that's really been my, my story okay wonderful i love your stories they're just just amazing um, I can definitely identify with some of your stories, Shael. Um, being a woman um, with bipolar, and but um, first it started off where I was very well, well respected because I was in university. I was always a A student, and and then bipolar came, and everything just went like you know what I mean, like a a tidal wave where it just kept going round and round and round. So I can I can totally understand where it's like you move from this place where everyone's like looking up to you. And then all of a sudden now people are starting to yeah. look down at you. So I can yeah. totally understand. I can totally identify with that. Um, considering, yeah, like for me, I've been hospitalized many times, um, 26 times in particular. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, six times. times yeah. yeah. In three provinces. So I can totally identify um, with some of your challenges mm -hmm. and stuff. I hope you enjoyed hearing from the mindful MCs. Be sure to come back next week when we will continue our interview and, and dive deeper into resilience. And to all you resilient minds out there, until next time, please subscribe to us on all our platforms and don't forget to rate the show and leave a review for us on Apple Podcasts. If you can think of one person that will receive value from today's show, or connect with the Mindful MC's testimonial, please share it with them. Please feel free to take a screenshot of this week's episode of the podcast and tag us on Instagram. You can tag myself, Only Cleone, or Resilient Minds 365, and today's guests at Mindful MC's. And remember, mental health is not a death sentence. Despite your illness, you can strive thrive, and live a life of abundance. Until next time, I'm Cleone Crawford, and I'm signing off.